Hello and welcome to FeatherCast. My name is Rich Bowen. Today I'm speaking with Atri Sharma, who is a member of the Lucene Project. And we've done interviews about Lucene and solar in the past, but we have some exciting news in this particular podcast. Thank you for taking time to speak with me today. Thank you for inviting me, Rich. In interviews in the past, when we've talked about solar and Lucene, we've brought up the question of the relationship between the two projects and the, the path forward as those projects become more independent. So tell us what you have planned coming up. So uh, I think Lucene and solar have always had a symbiotic relationship. As everybody knows, they are a part of the same project. And technically, solar is a sub-project of Lucene. And it has been the way for many years. Both the projects have benefited from that. And you know, in the recent times, with the advent of other popular open source search engines on top of Lucene, and also uh, solar maturing in its own right, uh, it just made sense for us to discuss if these two projects need be tied, you know, be coupled together so tightly now, especially since the fact that Lucene and Solar are moving at a very fast pace of development. And it might be just that they want to do the independent releases. And for example, if Lucene releases a massive feature, then Solar has to ensure that they catch up before there's a major release and vice versa, right? And also, for example, as a community, uh, Solar has decided to progress on a path of you know, cleaning up our house. So solar has always been a very uh, popular and uh, you know, much loved project, but now we have also said that we'll take a step back and focus on core functionalities, uh, focus on core features, which are much required. And maybe you know, there have been some longstanding uh, issues that our customers have had in terms of setting up or management of, the, uh, of a large solar cluster. So we've said that we are going to make some massive refactorings and redesigns of existing components. So in such, you know, when both the projects are making such huge strides in their own area, it just made sense to let them go in their own way and manage their own destinies. Uh, this was extensively discussed uh, on the community list. And finally, a formal vote was called, which passed with an overwhelming majority. And the, good new or the big news is that both the projects will now be independent top level projects. Uh, we are, as we speak, charting out a roadmap uh, because it's quite some work to get there. But we're charting out technical roadmap in terms of how we will get there, what will be the timeline, and more specifically, how will the release work? So both Solar and Lucene are planning uh, major releases in the first quarter of next year. I mean, that's a, you know, that's a timeline that we're thinking of. But by then, we are actively working to split the uh, projects into independent PLPs and establish it in its own right. So that uh, early next year, both the projects can do independent releases. Uh, that will be first as, a, as you know, single unit PMCs, as we like to call it. So you're expecting that this will happen early next year. What's the migration path for somebody that has an infrastructure that's already implementing these projects? I really don't think, I mean, uh, if, if you have a system where you're cross-cutting between Lucene and Solar, which is rarely the case, then you might have to, you know, there will be again some back compatibility issues. But uh, there won't be any worse than what you would face if you upgraded between major versions, right? So for example, okay. whenever you upgrade between major versions, uh, there are some things that break back compatibility. Uh, we don't expect this to be any worse than that. And for example, if you're using solar, uh, you're just using solar, right? Okay, there might be a new Maven URL or some sort of a different repository you have to pull from, but your artifacts remain the same, your APIs remain the same. Because if you look at it, Lucene is essentially a search library and solar is an implementation of a search engine using that library. So for the end user of solar, uh, the impact of Lucene not being in the same project is minimal. Okay, the only thing that might change is that, that you know, the feature cadence might be different, which is anyways today, right? For example, if yeah. uh, Lucene launches a very cool search engine or search feature today, Solar might decide not to adopt it, which it has done in the past. But from an end user, I don't see any huge uh, breakage points or pain points in terms of migration. It's just another major release. OK, that's really good news. For our audience members that are not already intimately familiar with what the, the split is between the two projects, um, can, can you just briefly give an overview of what will end up landing in each project? It, to, technically, if you look at the actual structure of the Lucene Solar code base, right? If you check out the Lucene Solar project, 
if you take a peek inside it, there are already two different artifacts, right? So there is a solar directory, which is the actual solar project. And then there's a Lucene directory, which has an actual Lucene project. So in terms of you know, technicalities, uh, when you actually perform a solar query, uh, it eventually goes to Lucene index, right? And then Lucene index performs its own internal search. So you can imagine that all of that index level, node level search uh, will be a part of the Lucene project, as it already is. Then all of the actual search engine components, which are you know replication or cluster management and all of the distributed engine part of the world is going to remain in solo. So basically, for, uh, when the split happens uh, for solo users, Lucene is an internal implementation detail of you know, how Solar executes its queries. They need not necessarily be bothered about how Lucene is doing it or where the code base lives or anything of that sort. And for Lucene, Lucene only has one agenda. OK, I am going to act as a library. And it is completely free of any user base. You know, for, for Lucene, Solar is a user or you know, a component that uses it. So they're completely free of it. And this bit is more from a, you know, a development perspective. But uh, logically, they're already separate. So when a user uses it, they already know the difference between what lies in Lucene and what lies in Solar. A month from today is ApacheCon. And mm -hmm. ApacheCon is our first virtual event that we're running at the Apache Software Foundation. And we have a dedicated search track at that event. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us what kind of content our attendees can expect to see in that track. Absolutely. Uh, so as you said, we have a dedicated search track and we have quite some exciting talks in that specific area. We have a myriad of talks there. There are some talks which just talk about how to you know, manage and learnings a large solar cluster, right? Uh, this is typically something that users struggle with. And we have some people who have experience in that area who have fine-tuned large clusters, who manage them professionally. Uh, we have people from Apple, we have people from Lucidworks talking about that. What does it really mean when you scale solar and you want it to perform at a very ma high magnitude of data? Then we have uh, some talks about development. You know, what's really happening? What's a new fe what's a new feature set that's coming to solar? For example, package manager is a very exciting change that's coming in, and that's expected to really change the way solar development happens. Uh, so there will be a talk about that. Then my personal talk is about Lucene. So Lucene has had a sleeper feature for many years, which is called concurrent search. So you know you can basically, for a single Lucene index, you can uh, spawn multiple threads, and each thread will uh, scan a bunch of segments. So even your single node search goes really fast. Uh, so I have been focused on that for a while and just improving it. And I think it's a really powerful feature that Lucene users should be aware of. How to use it, what's the trade-off, what's the recent developments that have gone there. So you'll find uh, management or you'll find, uh, you know, basically operational talks, management talks, you'll find things about new features. And you'll also find some developer-focused or advanced talks where you know, users who want to dive a bit deeper or maybe even get back to, you know, get to contribute to the project can really know how uh, the internals work. So if you're listening to this on feathercast.org or on YouTube, you can see the link to that track content in the, in the description, but you can also just go to apachecon.com to, to see the track listing. And we hope to see you there at ApacheCon. What can we expect to see in Solar and Lucene in the coming months? Yeah, you know, the, 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 the community are moving very fast. And uh, for example, solar is actually coming up with some pretty needed critical features that were required. For example, we never had circuit breakers, you know, uh, which is a very touted functionality that if my node is above 90% CPU, don't accept more queries. Okay. So that sort of, uh, yeah. So uh, those features were recently uh, added to solar. And we're also getting rid of a lot of legacy code. So uh, what I do expect to see in the coming months is a much leaner version of solar, uh, which is down to the bare bones, the essentials. And we are addressing the core, you know, we are hearing the voice of the customer and we're actually moving away from our traditional ways of looking at the project and into a new direction. And hopefully solar will accelerate much faster. Lucene has always been there. Lucene community has always been on a very clear track of development, uh, but solar is pivoting to a, a different uh, light now. And some of those major changes will be seen with the 9.0 release. So thank Absolutely. you so much for making time for this. Thank you so much for having me.